And keep in mind, that was like, I'm, I'm, it, once I get some reps in it, it's gonna be better, but I just came up with that today. Sue me for being creative, for being an artist, <laughs> trying to bring out content to you people instead of Google searching the 50 best funny quotes. What's up guys, welcome to the BarCast. We are here at the Horseshoe Came In On Saloon in Fells Point, Maryland, Baltimore City. I don't know how to say that. Is there an appropriate order? Is it Baltimore City, Fells Point, Maryland? Or is it Fells Point, Baltimore City, Maryland? The Horseshoe Came In On? Fells Point, Baltimore City, Maryland. Baltimore City, Maryland. Yeah. But There's nobody a lot of cares. There. Nobody like if you live in Fells Point, it's like its own town. Like it you really don't is. even say Baltimore City. You say I live in Fells Point, right. Maryland. Yeah. Because we don't even want to claim Baltimore City. <laughs> That's true. Um, and it's been interesting in Fells Point last several weeks with, with the chop tank going in and yeah. a bunch of drama with that. So, um, But yeah, Fells Point is its own little you know, slice of heaven in Baltimore City, if you want to call it that. It's a really great town. It's a small town feeling. Um, but yeah, and the horse you came in on, huge staple in Fells Point. Been here longer than America has been America. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> 1775. Um, that's right. So, um, with that said, welcome to the Barcast. This is the first time you're visiting. Hopefully, we earn a subscription and a like from you. Um, what's it about? Well, you know that if you've been following this channel for some time, that I talk about stocks all throughout the week. Five days a week, I'm talking about the stock market and how I'm trading and, and how to manage risk and all that good stuff. But Mondays at 4 o'clock Eastern Time, we air the Barcast because it's just our little outlet of being able to kind of talk about business and talk about how we're doing in our businesses and just whatever it is that we want to talk about. And it really um, is just our own little outlet. If people love it, that's great. If they don't, it's it's whatever, you know, it's, we're just making it our own thing. Um, so far, people seem to be liking it. We've incorporated... If you don't love it, shove it. <laughs> we've incorporated liquor, which makes everything better. Um, and we've also incorporated toasts. So Christian and I have our own toast, and then we also have the hashtag people's toast. So if you're not familiar with that yet, go check it out. Go to hashtag people's toast on any social media platform, and people are submitting their toasts to be aired on the barcast. So if you think you can do better than Christian or I, um, the proof is in the pudding. So go put your money where your mouth is on uh, any social media platform. We'll go find it, and it just might show up on the next barcast. If you don't love it, kiss my ass. <laughs> So, Just kidding. <laughs> so with that being said, today we're talking about, oddly enough, even though I said we're not talking about anything related to the stock market, but stop losses and how that applies to your own business. Yeah, so we talked, we can, we decided on this topic and landed on this topic because I personally am new to day trading. Yeah. And through learning through your mentorship and learning through the courses, I um, mean, your YouTube channel, like all the education, it's cool that I've drawn a lot of parallels to, to entrepreneurship and to business. Yeah. And so since you're kind of like the expert on the, in the investing side um, and I do a lot of business and I do coaching, I thought it would be cool to, to sort of discuss some of those parallels. So stop losses were one of those opportunities for us to talk about. Yeah. After we get some lubrication. <laughs> um, no homo. Libation. Yes. Something. <laughs> Something along those lines. In the form of Jack Daniels, which by the way, if you're not familiar with, this is actually the only chaos, the bar cast bottle, bottle 1A in the old number seven club at the horse you came in on. If you're not familiar with this, I can come in anytime I want and, and, and order from this bottle. If you are part of the number seven club, you can do that. And so, you can too, yes, drink from 1A, you can too, but you can't without our password. Without our password. So there's a password on the back of this bottle. So if you ever find yourself in the Fells Point area and you want to drink on us, Hit me up on any of my social media at on the chaos or at cashier. We'll give you the password. Just don't drink the whole damn bottle. All yeah, right. Yeah, don't be that guy or um, girl. But uh, that being said, let's give it a pour, right? Let's do it. This is the first time I think I poured out of my bottle. It's always been you. Yeah. Well, it also. I'm generous. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So. This is a part of the barcast where we talk about some sort of fun fact about the liquor we're drinking. Just so happens that we're going back to the old number seven this time around. 
Um, so what do you got? You got something? Okay. All right. The fun fact about old number seven. Yeah. Old number seven. So in relation to the horse you came in on, um, so J Jack Daniels wasn't a huge mover when we started the old number seven club. But now Jack Daniels actually sells. I've told you that it sells the most um, alcohol per capita in the world. Yeah. But Jack Daniels on a volume basis sells the most Jack Daniels in Maryland exceeding stadiums and it actually exceeds all stadiums in the country in all sports in all sports so in this location they sell more that's ridiculous than any other place that is yeah so just to give you perspective on this too this isn't a giant bar no okay so i don't know if anybody is familiar with what a row home looks like in baltimore city they're everywhere everybody knows what a row home is um they're in various cities but um Basically, if you take two row homes and put them together and just use the bottom floor as a bar, that's what the horse you came in on is. Yeah, so so to give people numbers, it's, I mean, our capacity is about 300 people. Yeah. So you can only fit, and that's tight, like packed to shoulder. To shoulder. Yeah. Or asshole to elbow. I can I, <laughs> I, I couldn't imagine having 300 people in this place. Yeah. So that is an insane amount of liquor. So, you got to go first that's again. Insane I'm amount sorry. of jet. Toast competition. Toast competition, hashtag people's toast, at cashier, at own the chaos. My toast is, without any dissertation at all, <laughs> may all of your ups and downs be under the covers. That's good, I like that. <laughs> I like that. Um, here's, I, I, full disclosure, he usually finds ones on the internet. He did not come up with that. He had somebody write it for him. Yeah. I'm not sure I got to check the judges, but I'm not sure if that's a disqualification judges. If I, I we're going to let it slide this time. Full disclosure that I, I, I borrow, I steal them from everywhere. You steal them? I steal them from everywhere. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's fair. But, that's fair. Okay. So here's my, I also don't take a half an hour to give mine. My away. original content. That's my turn. It's my turn to talk. <laughs> my original content. Um, I've really been stepping on my game lately. Mm -hmm. So I like to have a little theme and a message. So this one, I wrote um, to all the best men that have to write best man speeches. This is sort of my advice on how to give a great best man speech. So this is entitled Best Man Speech. Okay. All right? I'm nervous. because So I, if you're somebody like me who's not creative and can struggling to give a toast. Just, I'm your man. Just take it. I'm your man. And you guys can throw out topics in the comments. I'd love to start writing oh, ones yeah. based on I topics. I never even thought about that. Yeah. yeah. So put them down in the comments below. If you think my stuff's good because I'm about to win right here the toast competition. <laughs> All right, here's for you, best man. All right. Let this be your bot. <laughs> no, no. Here we go. I haven't even drank yet. All right, here we go. Here's to you, best man. <laughs> Let this be your guide. Start with the bride. Acknowledge the folks. Limit the inside jokes. Sorry, I got to do it one more time. Okay. I got it. I got it. I got it. This lowers points. It's like the slam dunk competition. Yeah. If you mess it up a couple times, you're yeah. disqualified. Yeah. All right. All right, let this be your guide. Start with the bride. Acknowledge the folks, limit the inside jokes. Keep it short and sweet, but give it some meat. And when you're done with the roast, give them a toast, the bride and the groom. And don't mention the boom boom room in Vegas bachelor party, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> That's so long. <laughs> it's high level. Whatever. If you're a best man and good you use job. that, good luck. No, no, no. The <laughs> advice is in there. You don't use the toast. The advice I'm is just in there. Saying. All Talking of it's about good meat stuff. And shit. We'll let the people speak. Give it some meat. And keep in mind, that was like, I'm. I'm it, once I get some reps in it, it's going to be better. But I just came up with that today. Sue me for being creative, <laughs> for being an artist, trying to bring out content to you people instead of Google searching the 50 best funny quotes. Some of them were hilarious. Yes. Long, straight, beast, and Tetris. <laughs> that was the worst <laughs> one. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. What are we talking about we're today? We're talking about stop losses. Stop losses. <laughs> as it relates to business. <laughs> this show is, is, is shit right now. <laughs> no, it's great. No, I'm just kidding. It's great. No, it really is. The shittier it gets, the better it is. <laughs> so, all right. So, I have a hard time... You know, kicking people to the curb sometimes. Yeah. Uh, I, I find that sometimes I'm a little bit too nice. 
We talking about women? No. Oh. <laughs> we just said stop losses in business. Oh, that's right. Stay on topic. My bad. Um, I don't. I don't really drink, so I get a couple of uh, sips in me, and that's it. What? I I for real? You know I don't drink. I know. Here you go. Do you a favor. <laughs> um, <laughs> but he's gonna so, throw it over his shoulder. That's right. But uh, yeah. So when it came, so you actually own a couple of businesses. Yeah. You've ran a, a few of them. You've consulted a few of them. So. What's a common theme when it comes to, you know, letting certain people loose? Like, what's the breaking point? Is there a breaking point? And how do you deal with that? Um, there's a couple of schools of thought. I'm the type of person where I actually probably also hang on a little too long. Yeah. Um, if, you've, if you've read Good to Great by Jim Collins, he talks about getting the right people on the bus and then even like making sure they're on the right seat on the bus. So like you can think about getting rid of people or you can also transition them to different roles. So it doesn't mean you need to necessarily always fire somebody, but if somebody's not sort of fulfilling an objective in that role, mm -hmm. you need to have some action. So we talked about, when we talked about stop losses and when I thought about this topic, it could pertain to staff, it could pertain to ideas. Yeah. Um, whatever it is with your business, there's different, like knowing when to cut your losses. So for for the people. That's a good point, because like for me, I was thinking of just people, but it really can apply it to like, if an idea is just not working, you know, changing direction and, and, and cutting that and moving on to the next thing. Well, yeah, and to set it up, like one of the things that we talked about, and the reason why I brought it to you was it's interesting because a lot of people don't realize that successful day traders actually don't have this crazy win percentage. At least it was a surprise to me. Yeah. Like you told me that a successful day trader maybe has a 50% win percentage. As far as winning trades to losing trades. Winning trades to losing trades. So, but with the, the difference is that they know when to cut their losses. So if you look at their wins and their losses, most of their losses, correct me if I'm wrong on any of this stuff, most of their losses are gonna be small in comparison to their wins, which yeah. are exponentially greater. So you might lose 500 bucks, right. but then you might win 5,000 bucks yes. or 10,000 right. bucks. So that was super interesting to me because you know, the first part about that was that it made it more realistic that I could be successful in day trading because yeah. I'm like, I can win one out of two. And then it's also where my focuses lie. The focus is not that you shouldn't lie on picking a winner, but I feel like for myself and more, most, a lot of people, I feel like that's kind of when it stops, but it's really, that's when it begins. Yeah. It's like when you place the bet, when it begins is like, okay, equal effort needs to be paid attention on when to get out if, if your due diligence doesn't play out the way you thought it would. Right. Yeah, and I mean, um, and it's kind of cool to see how you developed with that because you came into this not being a mm -hmm. trader and then you've actually started kind of hanging out in my mentorship and trying to learn learn how to how to yeah. do that how i do what i do um and you're starting to figure that out you know in the beginning you were kind of like everybody else you just held on to it forever yeah. um but you started to finally realize when to take profits and all of that stuff so yeah i mean and, and it's been pretty cool to kind of see you develop um into you know trying to figure that out, have a good understanding of how all that works. Well, and that's where the correlation came in with business. Like when I can, it, it actually helps me with business as, as well and helps me process it. But that whole idea is, you know, you do, I mean, if, if I look at sort of, I don't know all the answers, but from what you teach in your mentorship, if I look at the timeline of from when you start doing research right before you buy like you just start doing research through to when you sell your last share yeah there's this idea of like okay there's a due diligence up front there's a lot of energy and effort spent into that but then when you move you move like you know what you're looking for you know it's like slow is fast fast is slow so like it seems like you kind of slow start slow because you're like all right i need to be as sure as i can then you you get in, you move quickly. I mean, you're looking for um, what do you say? Like, um, what is it? What is it that you say? 
when it's like affirmation, when like you don't buy something right away, but when you have an idea of a stock, you actually are looking for indicators to show that what your hypothesis is is true. Yeah. So like if you think before the bell, the stock's going to go up, you're waiting to see what's the phrase we're, it's we're called. Just, we're just looking for the market to react. Like if, if or, or, or and watch the volume come in. So if there's a specific catalyst that comes out before the market opens, so if you're trading o over the counter stocks, you can't trade them pre-market or after hours. And so um, I'm looking for news that comes out before the market opens to say, okay, this looks like this could move this stock, this particular news. Yeah, but there's a phrase you use that say, you think that, but then you wait to see if it actually moves. So it's like an indicator, like you're looking for indicators. There's a phrase you say. Okay. I, wish, I hate to put you on the I have spot. a lot of phrases. But basically what you're saying is, I think it's gonna go up today, but you don't automatically buy when it opens. Right. You actually still wait to see if it goes up, yeah. and then you'll try look for an, op an entry opportunity. Right. So it's the same thing. It's like, but, but you move, you know when you wanna enter, you move in, and then once you're in, then it's again like, all right, I need to I need to know sort of like what controls I'm gonna put in place, whether to get out, out either way, whether you have losses or, yeah. or you have gains and you wanna just ride free shares, whatever. So all that is like, you don't think about that when you're a new trader and you don't have the education. Yeah. And it's the same with business. It's like, you just think about launching your business, but launching your business is just the start line. Yep. There's so many other things that happen that you need to, you need to decide, do I cut my losses mm -hmm. or do I stick with the plan? And that's really where business is won and lost in my opinion. Like, yeah. can you, do I need to shift in the moment or do I, am I steadfast in my beliefs of what, you know, whatever that decision is? Well, I think it's important too, to talk about, and it's crazy how a lot of this relates to trading because I always tell people, you know, to diversify your account. Yeah. Don't just throw everything that you got into one penny stock. First of all, penny stocks are risky as hell. There's no question about that. So throwing all of your, you know, your whole account or whatever it is that you have into one particular stock thing, and that's going to be the one, you might as well be gambling. You might as well just go get a scratch off at that point. So for me, I apply that to business in that we're generating, generating multiple sources of income. So, you know, uh, this podcast, I mean, YouTube is yeah. one source of income. You know, the mentorships are another source of income and we're looking on other ways to generate different sources of income. That's why we have more than one mentor. Um, you know, it's just to make sure that the business sustains that way. And, you know, it's been pretty cool, you know, affiliates that, I mean, that all kind of plays in so that you're not just relying on one specific idea or resource resource to make or break your business. Yeah. Well, and, and so that's, that's sort of the lesson I think that I took from it from an entrepreneurial perspective that I'll actually bring into coaching, which is, you know, and it's, it's more than just stop loss. It's like if you have an idea, um, or you have a person, right? You have to, you have to do your due diligence up front. And I get this all the time. Actually, my current client I'm working with, they have people in positions that should have never been promoted into those positions. Yeah. Not that they're not good people, but they're just not qualified. They, you know, and like all these things are coming to light. But it's not a surprise. Like when we look back, all the warning signs were there. They just didn't do their due diligence. And it's tough for them because I'm also saying we need to cut our losses. Mm. Like if we continue this way, this can impact your business yeah. and we don't want our losses to be that great. So it, it, it's already showing itself, but like let's minimize our losses to maximize our gains. Right. And so knowing that, like that, that's the same model. It's the same exact model when you're thinking about your business, like do your due diligence first because not enough people do their due diligence. And then when you're moving forward, like analyze it and assess it and if it's not going the way you thought, make a determination and, and be be swift in whatever decision you want to make. Yeah, I think it's important to say be swift, but also don't act on impulse. Too, True. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, unless it's something like extreme. But yeah, I mean, for me too. Like, I don't know. I'm I'm patient about certain things, and then there's other things where it's just like, okay, that's kind of like a no-brainer. Cut it. Let's just move on to the next thing. Yeah. It is just frustrating and, it, and it's important to talk about the whole due diligence part of it because going back to, you know, finding certain mentors that just don't work out. It's like there are certain mentors that I spent an entire year on trying to get into into place within We Trade HQ and it's like I, they ignore me time and time again. And it's like how many yeah. more times am I going to chase chase this? Yep. 
and how much time am I wasting that I could be spending on something that's actually going to, you know, produce. And so, yeah, I mean, and really that's something that I'm taking right now and just thinking to myself, you know, maybe there's a few, you know, loose ends that I need to tie up because it's just not, it's just a waste of my time. Yeah. And I'm glad you made that point because like I said, I tend to stick in things longer and I, and I think you should always err on the side of caution. So if you're committed to something and you've done your due diligence, you should ride it out and make sure you're certain. Yeah. But the moment you realize that this doesn't make sense, you've got to be swift with it. Yeah. Like when we know in our gut, and that's the thing that like we try to excuse things away, but like if your gut's telling you and if all the indicators are saying that, you know, it didn't work out like I planned, you gotta put your pride aside yeah. and just cut losses because I think that's a, that's the piece of it, and and I would imagine that's what happened with stocks. It's like we want to prove it, be proven so right, yep. and it's like it's an admission of failure by by doing that. But the reality is, you have to do it to win, and it's ridiculously hard. Yeah, I mean, how hard is it for you to just go to to, that, to a person that maybe you wronged and say I was wrong? Yeah, it's ridiculously hard. Yeah. So then you got to tell yourself that you're wrong every single day. You know, I, there it's it's rare that I get into a trade. Um, that I'm green on every single day, you know? And yep. so there's uh, usually I'll have four to five trades that I'm making a day and I'm going to be red on one or two of those, but the green ones are going to far outweigh the, the red ones. But I'm still have to tell myself at least that many times that you made a mistake and cut that because, and that's where a lot of traders get caught up too. Is just, um, you know, well, this is going to work out. This is going to work out. And lots of times we'll even average down on something like that. And then they're even a bigger hole. Yeah. So Rue shine. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's your own fault. <laughs> but, um, no, and I think it applies to just business too. It's, you know, they believe in something that, you know, so much and they don't want to sit there and admit to themselves that this part of their business is failing. And instead of just stopping right then and there and moving on to what would work yeah. and, and putting all your time and energy into that to accelerate your business, they're still, still so stuck on, you know, just um, you know, what's, what's here and to, to admit that failure. It's so hard and, and I get it, but it, it has to be done. Yeah, and that's, that's how people have to reconcile it. As a trader or as a business person, it's not just about, you know, making something work and letting go just to let go. But if, if it helps you reconcile it this way, you have to look at it as like, if I keep putting energy into this, that's an opportunity cost that I could have put it, at, at, that I'm using at the expense of putting my energies towards something that could have greater gains and could be the next winner. So like yeah. you're, you're ending up compounding the effects of this loss. Yep. So um, I think it's so cool, you know, and we'll hopefully bring, be able to bring more examples of the correlations, but I think they're totally the same sort of situation. Yeah. In business the parallels are pretty awesome. Yeah. You know, when you start to really think about it, yep. it's really cool. Um, well, that being said, we're just about done. We're done. But, but um, I want to invite you guys uh, to uh, send us a toast. So you guys saw in the beginning of this broadcast how we gave ourselves uh, oh, I killed it. Ridiculously long Vote toast for me. That really kind of were overall shit. But <laughs> so this shouldn't be hard for you to do better, right? Please dig us out of this hole and <laughs> send in your people's toast. Uh, go to hashtag people's toast, submit your, your toast, and it just might be on this podcast or the next. Start so, with the bride. Oh my god. <laughs> so again, hashtag people's toast at cash here at only chaos. Go check us out on all social media platforms. And that's gonna do it for me guys. Again, I hope that you like this video and subscribe if you've never been here before. And that's gonna do it for me. Christian, thank you very much. Thanks to the horse you came in on. And as always guys, I will see you all before the bell and B Smith is out.